You're now watching a clip from the Inspired by show. You can watch the full episode on our YouTube channel or listen on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure to head over there, leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed it, and follow the show. You mentioned there the need to want to make people feel good. Yeah. Where did that come from for you? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> it's got a, so maybe trigger warning. Um, probably because of my mum. Um, my mum and dad split up when I was six and my mum was always depressed. She was always suicidal. And one of my first memories is of my mum being in hospital, having um, tried to take her own life. And when my dad left, the message to me from all of the adults around me, apart from one aunt, was to look after my mum. But I was six years old, you know, what, how can, and my mum was pregnant as well. My dad left when my mum was pregnant and I was six. Um, and so, you know, there were times I have a very, very vivid memory that I've had to work through a lot in the past few years of my mum being very heavily pregnant on the floor crying. And I'm like, there's nothing I can do. What can I do? What did I do? I went off, put the radio on and danced to Stevie Wonder. So, you know, maybe it is the escape. Maybe that's where that all comes from. Or maybe even the distraction, like you showed that you could light up the room because we can't always control things. And I, I, I really resonate with that story of you being six years old because that's a lot of a burden for a six mm. year old to carry. Whether your mum was pregnant or not, you know, you're not responsible for your parents. And yeah. I, I personally experienced that as well, The where we almost like swap roles, yeah. where the child becomes the parent and the parent is now the child especially psychologically, or we feel like we need to look after our parents. And maybe in that time, would you say that you felt like that was your way of cheering her up? Because you couldn't control anything else. You couldn't probably, control yeah. the, the situation. You can't control her. Yeah, probably. And my mum was a singer as well. Her dad was a singer and the whole family were into music. And it was one of the things that we always did all the time. Even my, you know, my dad was um, a guitarist and he sang a bit as well, but he was a songwriter. But we were all into music and another a, a nice memory, <laughs> another very early memory I have is a, at my aunt's wedding. And I had one of these, um, it was um, probably 1980 or something like that. And I had one of these dresses where you spin around and it comes up, right? So I was, um, the, I think probably the adults hadn't had a drink enough drinks or something yet, but I was the only one dancing. And so every time I did a spin, I got this round of applause and I was like, this is great. So, but I'm, I mean, I'm saying this thinking back, I just, wanted to see my dress come up you know mm. and then someone gave me 50p and I was like you can get paid for this as well <laughs> that's amazing and I think that's probably where where you know the the entrepreneurial side of it started as as a dancer but I think yeah probably making my mum making my mum happy but also it was a way that we bonded as a family so you know of an evening my mum's got five brothers and sisters. She's the eldest of six. And all of their friends were coming. It was re it was a very, very um, lively house. So she had a, her two brothers would come over and they were cockneys and they would make up all these scenes and we'd, you know, we'd and we'd pretend to be on EastEnders and that kind of stuff. And they'd bring all their friends over and we'd all do music and th they, would, they would sing and I would dance or sometimes I would join in with the singing. And it's just something that's always been there although I I didn't know at that time I thought I thought I was actually going to be a paramedic <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know where that came from wow. um but yeah I think yeah it's all entertaining is just something that's in our family yeah. and I've known you for years and I've never known that I've never known that so that's why I love running the show because I find it fascinating Carrie that it's almost like have you ever had it where you're like that was destiny or that was destined for you. It's like you were surrounded by creativity, innovation, you know, that energy, that imagination. And it, it obviously comes through now with what you're doing. So yeah. tell me how you then transitioned from dancer, Carrie, to singer, songwriter, performer. Oh, yeah. Someone <laughs> selling albums. Sounds good when you say it like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that my life? Yeah, 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 yeah it is. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, how did that happen? Well, I went to boarding school and we didn't have dance classes um, or anything like that, or even drama at boarding school. But what we did have, we lived in little house, at little houses of like 50 kids at a time. And we'd have like, they called them house parents and house carers. And um, I always, always dance. Now, any of my school friends who, um, if any of them are watching this, they'll remember that I was always dancing. Us, We had a separate dining hall. This is really, I was a weird child. And I would, 
<laughs> when people were <laughs> when we would go to to tea so tea started at about five o'clock in the evening and it probably went on till about seven by the time everyone in the school was fed and I would spend that whole time on the dining hall steps singing and dancing but I only danced I only sang because I didn't have the music so I wasn't interested in singing I was interested in the dancing so I always danced I would make up dances with my friends I'd be like I'm the one in the middle and you and I would do all the choreography like no you you spin around that way and then you spin around that way and I'm going to do that all that kind of stuff before that at home I would get my toys and I would do I'd be pretend to be Madonna um, Michael Jackson, Paula Abdul, Janet Jackson, all of, them, all of that, Jermaine Stewart. And I'd get all my toys and I'd line them up and they'd be my audience and I'd make up these shows, right? And I did that the whole of my, the whole of my childhood till I was like 16. And then at 16, I left boarding school, kind of had to become an adult then and moved out to Torquay um, very randomly and lived there for a year, had no friends. It was just me and my mum and my stepdad. And we were building this business that didn't really work. Um, but I had no friends, so I had to start all over again, but I didn't know how to talk to anyone, right? So I just, in those days, you could go out clubbing under 18, so I was only 16. So I would just go out clubbing and dance and then people would come to me because, oh, you're a good dancer and blah, blah, blah. And then I would make friends that way. Anyway, long story, trying to cut it a bit short. Came back to London, started dance classes, couldn't follow dance classes because I'd already always been the choreographer or a freestyler. So they'd be going that way. I'd be going that way. Their hands up, their right hands up, my left hand would be up. Didn't work. So I couldn't, then I couldn't be a dancer. So I just didn't know, really know what to do for years. And I'd fell into going to gigs. I'd always loved music, as I've, as I've said. And I, and I was into punk and I was into grunge and I was into rock and metal. So I fell into going to gigs and I must have gone to three or four gigs a week for about five years. Um, and then and then I started dating uh, um, a guitarist and he told me that I should sing and I was like, don't, I wanna dance. I, but by then I was like 21, it was, too, it was too late. Anyway, that didn't happen. Got married and my, my husband at the time, he bought me singing lessons for Christmas. No clue whether it was because I was a good singer or a terrible singer, but he, he bought me singing. He doesn't even remember, apparently, bought me singing lessons. And that was it. I was just like, this is what I want to do. And um, Taya came along, my daughter came along and she was about four months old when the, the relationship had already been abusive, not majorly, but an, enough for me to know that this wasn't right. And about six months in, we'd it was going really, really badly. I was, you know, I wasn't allowed my own money. Um, everything I did was wrong. It was that kind of emotional abuse, really. Um, and I read a book that I've never found again, but it was called Change Your Life in Seven Days. And it said, decide on the one thing that you want to do. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, I just want to sing. And the next week I moved back to London and, and the rest is history. I started building my singing career from there. 